other than the run. So I got one area on this fender that's got like a ton of run. Look at this. So that'll be a lot of sand right there. All right, guys, it's time to pick a winner for the free t-shirt giveaway that Dad announced in the outro of last week's video. All you had to do to be entered in to win was just to comment Mustang down below in the comment section. Uh, looks like we've got five comments down here that commented Mustang. So I'm gonna come back up here to the random number generator just like we did last week and uh, set them in to one, the max to five, and then generate. Looks like winner number three. We've got one, two, three. KPW Auto, looks like you want a free rebuild t-shirt. Um, just send us an email. You can find our email information in the about section of our YouTube channel and we'll get you your uh, t-shirts into you. Congratulations. Okay guys, if you can remember from last week, as we're working on the 2010 Mustang. We started sanding down or scuffing down all the parts to get ready for paint. So if you can tell the difference there, that pink looking color was that color before we started scuffing it. So that's the one we did all the body work on. So after you scuff it using the gray scuff pad and that scuffing agent we talked about last week, that's what they look like. So that's ready. I'm going to do a couple little um, spots where we had rock chips in there. Get that done. The bumper is scuffed and ready. And so this one we got to scuff it and then also sand those areas where we have filler and get ready for primer on those areas. So. Got more sanding to do, which seems like is always the thing with these cars. So let's get that done and then we'll spray some primer. You guys uh, remember last time we had a little bit of uh, trash in our paint and we had to sand out. So I ordered this, it's called a desiccant snake. I've used one of these before. Um, what, the, what it does is filled with some kind of stuff, like a sand or a desiccant that's in there. But uh, it filters out the impurities in your paint, like moisture and oil, and anything else that might be in the air before it gets to your paint. So I'm gonna put this in the line and then uh, hopefully that'll help take get rid of some of that trash that we had in there. I know we had trash from external sources, but it could also have been oil or moisture in our air. So I'm gonna try that this time. I just uh, took the fittings off my old desiccant snake and dumped, and dumped the stuff out that's inside it a little bit. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is what's in one of these snakes. Like little beads of stuff whatever it is it's what absorbs all the bad stuff that's in your air so mystery solved all right so that's three coats of primer it's drying now and i'll just let it dry all night it's start to get late anyway so uh, in the morning i'll take the paper off and we'll sand it and then it'll be time for sealer. So it's the next day. Well, our primer's nice and dry. So what we'll do first is uh, get some 320 grit sandpaper and sand that down uh, just to get it smooth. And then we'll use some 400 wet and wet sand it and make sure we don't have any tape lines left and it's all smooth into the other paint. And then we'll be ready for some sealer.
I've got this sanded to uh, 320 dry and I had another high spot I had to knock back down with a hammer just a little bit and then I put a little bit of tiny filler back on there so I have to resand that after it dries but I'm gonna go ahead and wet start wet sanding this down here and this up here with some uh, corner. this fender just about ready I got to do a little bit more scuffing down there at the bottom but I just got the hood off well, I had some help here and um, I'll go ahead and remove all the these seals and these windshield wiper squirters and the hinges and all that stuff and start scuffing the underside of this thing down so that when we do some the sealer on the fender we can also do the sealer on this so a lot more scuffing So finally, I got all this stuff clean, scuffed, and dry. Dry is what took forever because it's so cloudy and rainy today. But the sun's finally coming out a little bit. It's starting to dry it up some. So now I'm gonna wax and grease remove all this stuff and uh, tack cloth it. And then cover up this area here on this fender so I don't get any sealer on it. And then just seal all those primed areas and then since i'm doing a color change on this one i'm going to go ahead and seal this whole underside of the hood okay so the sealer is done turned out good on the bottom of the hood and I already took the fender back inside, let it dry. I'm not gonna put a red on it today because I want it. To, I want to sand it and uh, paint the red on it when I do the car when it's back together. So I'll spray these two hinges with red and do this hood. And then I'm gonna on the last coat. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the uh, when we did the upper radiator support. I'm gonna put 80% color with 20% clear since it's underneath the hood and, and spray that on the last coat and then we won't be straight clear. Okay, so I've got two coats of just regular red color on here. So now I'm getting ready to put the last coat. It's got the clear mixed in with it, the 20% clear. And we'll be done for the day. All right, so now that this is done, we'll uh, let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll flip it back up the other direction start working on getting ready to, the, to paint the top and then get the uh, other fender that we just did the uh, sealer on normally we would just paint color right over that but since I want to do it on the car we'll, we'll sand this down with 600 a little bit just make sure we don't have a tape line there and uh, get everything reinstalled and get ready to paint Welcome to the Mundane Minute. Well, this Mundane Minute is the Ford Edge. It's a blast from the past. I don't know how many of you guys were even subscribers back when we started this project, but it's back from the paint shop. And I just have to put a few things together on the front bumper and get that installed. And this thing is ready. It's really good. Mike did a bang up job on it as normal. So we will, I'll 
do maybe one more mundane minute on this thing and that'll be the end of it. And that's gonna be my wife's car. Remember it's a full leather loaded edge. Everything's all, we did all the stuff on the interior before we ever took it to Mike. So placed an airbag and just fixed a bunch of the stuff in here, but it's perfect now. So it's 45,000 miles and that's it. All right, so here's a little bit of an update. As you guys saw, I got the underside of the hood painted and so now we've got it put back up and put back on the car and anywhere there's like a little shiny area see the reflection on there i need to do some more scuffing so that needs to there needs to be no shiny left on it so i got that to do and then i noticed when i was after i had uh, put this sealer on the spender it's hard to tell when you're doing body work because you don't have a shine to see when you got if you miss something or if you got a high and a low, but there's just enough of the shine on that uh, sealer that I could see that I had like a little low area right here. And so I should have done this earlier, but if you put a straight edge across there, some that's flexible. I noticed that I had a little bit of a shine or a low spot right here. You could just tell by the way the reflection was on it. So I put a straight edge on there and went with the curve of this fender. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a low area right here. It comes back where this tape starts here, and this tape starts here, it goes back with the curve. But this area right in here is a little bit low. I mean, like a 16th of an inch or something. So I went ahead and scuffed this back up to, with 80 grit. And then I'm gonna put another really thin layer of filler on it. And then I'll have to seal over that again before I uh, do the paint, but I can seal it while I'm sealing the hood, so it won't be that big a deal. All right, so now that that's dry, I'm going to uh, retape some more over here and down around just to make sure I don't scratch any more than I have to. Then I'm going to use this round deer block with sandpaper on it because I've got kind of a slope that goes like this, kind of dipped in area right here, and. I don't want to just use a flat block. I want to try to be able to, this will kind of go with the dip in and out. So I'm going to use this and see how far I can get without uh, messing up my, my curve. All right, so after quite a bit of sanding, as you can see, I've got two little high spots still. I thought I had a low spot right here, but really it was two high spots on either side of it. So as I was sanding it, that came out, but this needs to be, I knocked that down a little bit already with the hammer. Now I'm getting ready to knock that down just a little bit. And then I'll fill it again. Nobody ever said body work did not take patience. So it's kind of a nasty day. It's kind of misting rain out there. And so I'm forced to have to do all this stuff inside. So here's kind of what I'm left with. <laughs> Got my hanging garden going again. So uh, first step is I need to seal everything that needs to be sealed again. So this area that I fixed up here on the top multiple times, I need to seal that again. And I need to seal this whole hood because we're doing the color change. So that's the first step and then we'll go back through and uh, when we get to the red, we'll uh, hit this top part of the fenders, both of them, and try to shoot it from the top where it just where this corner just kind of cuts off the thing because we're doing a blend here. So we're going to hit the top, try to let it just fade off around the corner and then get all this, the new red color, and then these little chips that I fixed. And here are these little rock chips. We'll have to do those. And same thing with this top to blend into the hood. We're gonna do this whole thing with the new red and then we'll blend back here probably to get enough to get these chips. 
as long as we leave this whole area that goes into the door the same color because that's where we're wanting it to match the wells into the door it's where you see it really well when the light hits it and then we've got this bumper and it's all scuffed and ready it just needs red and clear on it so nothing else to do to that So I'm done with all the uh, uh, sealer on the fender and the hood and I'm sanding down the sealer back down on some of these parts of the hood. A lot of times you don't have to sand sealer but I am not very good at spraying sealer for some reason. I get it too thick so I'm going to smooth it out it with some 600 before I put the color on there. And then I talked to Mike and I realized that I also have to seal this bumper so I'm going to get that sealed. And hopefully I don't have to sand it down again after I seal it and we can get, hurry up and get some color on this thing. Alright, so everything is clean. Wax and grease removed, pack cloth, ready for color. So, next stop is Red Town, USA. So now is time, the time that always makes me nervous to clear. I'm gonna let this flash off a little bit, probably in 15 minutes or so, and we'll get the clear started. And hopefully we have no issues. Well, the clear is done. Got some major runs I gotta sand out, but Hopefully it dries all right. And we have a really dumb mosquito or something that's landed in there. So he'll have to get sanded out. So definitely a little bit of sanding to do, but I think it's gonna turn out okay. Other than the runs. I got one area on this fender that's got like Time to run. Look at this. Ooh. Oh, that'll be a lot of sand right there. Sometimes you just have to take a break from painting and come out and sit on the deck and pet the dog. Well, that old vent. <laughs> Well guys, thanks for watching this episode of Rebuild It. We're finally on the downhill slope on this 2010 Mustang. And uh, sorry this video was a little bit short, but there was so much sanding involved last week that we didn't want to show you just hours of me sanding and sanding and sanding. But the next episode we will get to finally, hopefully get to start putting this thing back together, which is always my favorite part is the reassembly. So we'll have a little bit more sanding on this, but we won't show much of it. Next week, uh, we gotta get some runs out and and we get to start slapping this thing back together. So if you're enjoying the content, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. Thanks a lot. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. See you guys next week. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.